Good day and welcome to Memory and Engagement Opportunity for Wellness. I'm Michelle Hobb and I'm the speech language pathologist and also the leader for the Metal Arc Memory Program. To start off with, let's review your homework from last week. So what we did last week was look at pictures that were similar um, and then try to find the differences between the pictures. Also, we looked at pictures and then tried to memorize the pictures and then later, after a distraction, try to recall specific details so that we could compare them to a similar picture. What we're working on with this is our visual attention and our visual memory. We also worked on sequencing and organizing the input that we're giving our brains by working in a structured pattern from left to right and top to bottom. Visual memory is very important to add to our auditory memory. When we are able to use the two together, it helps us to enhance what our brain is being given and to supplement um, both modes of input. So I hope that you took advantage of this opportunity and looked at either a picture from a magazine or a newspaper um, or even some artwork around your, your own place um, and then tried to visualize again from that left to right, top to bottom pattern that our brain likes um, and remember things from those pictures. If you didn't do it last week, you can still do it this week. So try it out and give your brain a little test. Of course, we always want to work on moving multiple times a day. This is anything from sitting here and doing calf raises where you come up on your toes, um, where you just, you know, crisscross your arms a few times and get that blood flowing. Um, anytime we are in a, a routine of sitting more often, we want to try to get up and move more. Um, you know, one of the, the worst things that was ever invented for, for those of us who want to keep our brains moving and our, and our bodies moving um, is that remote control. Remember, we used to have to always get up and go to the TV and push the buttons um, to make the channels change or the volume change. Um, so maybe even try taking a day where you don't use your remote control and you make yourself get up and move to your TV every day. Um, and then, of course, staying connected. Um, during this time of physical distancing, um, it's really important to make sure that we are staying socially connected. The, if we use communication um, and then we try to remember the details of that conversation with people um, and then even follow up with them later about some things that you discussed, that is working also on our emotional well-being, but also our memory and our communication, listening, and speaking skills. So that's a review of last week and kind of a little snippet into this week. So what's the purpose of this opportunity today? Well, obviously you're here, so you're ready to engage, and we want to really focus on attending. So being present and taking in information. We're also going to do some moving thinking and breathing exercises today and then learning and exploring new ways or reinforcing older ways um, to keep our brain stimulated. And then as usual, I like to make you laugh. Um, laughing's good for the soul and good for the body. So Monday, April 27th was National Babe Ruth Day. Um, I think this is just a really great picture. Um, I love this one. It, it just, it's something that sparks a lot of um, excitement. I, I know that I, many of us, most of us, the vast majority of all of us, were not around during this time period when Babe Ruth was playing um, or even in this series here. Um, but I just, I think it is all about America's pastime. And I know there's some disputes out there about what sport is the best pastime, um, but it just is pretty amazing um, and brings all kinds of great memories um, to my own self um, and my family thinking about um, the history of baseball and um, the legends that we have um, 
And even today, knowing that um, he still holds many records um, for his home runs. Um, and so I think that's pretty amazing that in a time um, that many years ago, um, back in the 1920s, that someone can still hold sporting records um, in today's society. Um, so just enjoy this picture um, and let it start to bring down uh, bring you down that path to memory lane. So take a second, grab some paper and a writing instrument. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the benefits of long-term memory and the benefits of writing. So hopefully you had a chance to grab some paper and a writing instrument. What we're doing is doing a little journaling or a little log. Um, some people kind of have this mental block about writing a journal. Um, so I often use a log um, as another term to represent the similar concept of basically just writing down, keeping track of things that we're feeling, that we remember, um, things we want to remember, um, things we saw or things that we did. So jot it down and then you can come back to this later in your day or in your week. Um, but I want you to take some time to describe your memories about baseball. As we think back to Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig, um, you know, what was it that they brought to baseball? Um, and then what kinds of things um, do you recall about, about baseball? Consider and take take that memory or a couple memories um, and consider the place you know was it um, you know down the road in in an open field where you were playing stickball was it you know just down at the the local elementary school in the in the playground area was it at the St. Louis Cardinals or the Kansas City Royals games. What, where were you when you think about some of your memories with baseball? What was the weather like? Um, what kinds of things did you see and did you hear? The crack of the bat, you know, the, the roar of the, the crowds, the people that are going up and down, the concession people going up and down the stadium seats to sell you peanuts and popcorn and ice cold beer. Um, so along those lines, what were some of the smells or the tastes that you have when you think back to those days of baseball? Um, so jot these things down, take some time today or within the coming days and take that stroll down memory lane. So we're going to go back to some of our seated and or standing exercise, but we're adding into it cognition. So what we are working with here is what we're calling cognitive load. So we're challenging the systems of exercise, the systems of body movement, breathing, and coordination along with some cognition. So being able to um, pick the, the activity that you're supposed to do based on the certain circumstances, um, thinking about more than one thing at a time. Um, so this is where our brain benefits the most um, in creating different pathways and making more synapses um, when we add in exercise with cognition. So to get us started, we're just going to go into our marching with moving our feet and arms. Okay, so we're just moving, getting our heart rate up a little bit, starting to feel those joints warm up, limber a little bit, and get that breathing going. So if you're standing, that's totally fine. Um, just, you know, use the, the stance, keep your legs just a little bit apart, about hip width apart. Um, and even in the seated position, and we still want to keep those legs about hip width apart. Okay, so this is our constant today. Um, we're going to be marching, moving those feet and arms throughout. And then we did this a couple weeks ago, um, but I wanted to come back to it, and we're going to change our consonants. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to continue marching. 
But then whenever we have a vowel, we're going to do jumping jack arms. So as you can kind of see, probably by my body movements here, my legs are still marching, but my arms are doing jumping jack movements. Now, if you have shoulder issues and that bothers you, you can still do the jumping jack arms, just moving at your elbows rather than at your shoulders. <clears throat> so don't let that limit what you're doing here to in order to still get this good workout, okay? So let's try this now. We're going to just go through our, our vowels, and every time we say a vowel, we'll do our jumping jack arms. So A, E, I, O, U, okay? And then we'll go back into our marching, okay? Then the next thing we're going to do is consonants, okay? And I got off there, so it's good to take a second just to get back into your, your march so that we have alternate arms and legs just as if we were walking down a hallway, okay? So then our consonants this time, we're going to punch. And I want you to punch with both arms, okay? So it'll be punch, punch. So anytime we have a consonant, punch, punch, okay? Again, shoulder issues, you can keep it low, not a problem. Or if it feels good, bring those arms up higher, okay? So here we go. Now we're going through the alphabet and we're going to punch on each consonant, okay? So B, C, D, E, F. Whoops, there, see, I messed up, I got going. So we'll go back to that again. B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, Z. All right, and then back to that marching. So on that one, <clears throat> what I did initially was, <clears throat> excuse me, initially when I was doing that, I was going faster, um, and that didn't work very well. Also then that kind of messed up my rhythm um, with the, the consonants and the pattern of my marching. So experiment with that a little bit as you practice this later. Um, we're gonna go on now and we're going to try some words, okay? So we're going to do this a couple of different ways. This first way will be a little bit easier. So again, we're going to march the entire time and we're doing jumping jack arms for vowels and punching for consonants. Okay, so here we go. Our first word is Babe Ruth. Okay, so here we go. B, A, B, E, R, U, T, H. Okay, good, nice job. Keep that march going, getting that heart rate up a little bit. The next one, one of the things that Babe Ruth was known for was a slugger. Okay, so here we go. We'll do this one together. S, L, U, G, G, E, R. Good job. Get back into that rhythm. Nice arm swings, nice leg movements. Hopefully you're starting to warm up a little bit. All right, our next word is baseball. Here we go. B, A, S, E, B, A, L, L. Good, there we go. All right, so again, what we're working on is that cognition with our exercise. As you can see, I let my cognition slip for a second and got mixed up on my E. All right, let's do one more with the word written down. Here we go. H-O-M-E-R-U-N. Good. All right, so there's our home run. So the next thing we're doing is now we are taking out the words 
spelling. So we have to process and hold on to that word that we're spelling in our head while we do our vowels and our consonants. So this first one is obviously the umpire, okay? So we might do both of them and, and he's calling a strike out, okay? So let's do umpire first. So U M P I R E. Okay, keep marching. And then let's do strike out. Here we go. S T R I K E. Then out. O U T. Good. So you see the difference there. Let's keep marching with this as we talk a second. So we had to envision what that word was in our head without reading it. Um, so that brings in another level of cognition to the memory part. Next one is peanuts. Here we go together. P E A N U T S. Good. And then hopefully as you're seeing some of these pictures, maybe it jogs a few more memories for you. So when you go back later and work on your um, walk down memory lane journal entry, you'll have some more things you want to think about. And our next one here is stadium. Okay, stadium. Here we go. S T A D I U M. Good. All right. So hopefully that gave you a bit of cardiovascular workout, woke you up, or either um, helped you get out over that feeling of needing a siesta here, depending on the time of day that you're watching this. And so again, the goal of that is twofold. We're working on exercise, which what is good for the heart is good for the brain. And we also are working on that cognitive load, pushing our thinking while we're working on motor concepts. Okay, so after that, let's do a few breathing exercises um, to help us get ready to focus on some new learning strategies. So feet on the floor. Um, we want to think about sitting on the sit bones, um, getting, <clears throat> excuse me, getting up nice and tall and those shoulders are pulled back a bit. We're going to focus on expanding our lower diaphragm, okay? So as we do this, we're breathing in through our nose and really expanding, allowing oxygen and air to go deep into your diaphragm. And then as we exhale, we're pushing that out through our mouth and really squeezing the air out of our diaphragm. Okay, the goal of this is, again, to increase um, your ability to be able to, to focus um, by just kind of almost calming and renewing your, your attention um, into your breathing. Um, so let's do a few together here. So you can take your hands, place them underneath your diaphragm, or sorry, underneath your rib cage, so right there in that diaphragm area. And as we breathe in, where our belly's going to get big, and it's a metaphor, so it's as if you feel as if your belly's getting big with belly's not really getting big. So we're breathing in through our nose, two, three. Good. So again, breathing in the nose for three and out of the mouth for three. Big breath in, two, three. And in, two, three. And one more, in, two, three. Good. So you can also add on to that um, by breathing in for three and out for six seconds or even four seconds, just trying to add on to the length of your exhale um, from what you breathed in on your three seconds. So again, the goal here is to help us to focus our attention, 
um, on our breathing, which then we can transfer over to focusing on the things that we want to look at, um, remember, talk about, um, and you know, just experience better. So today we're going to talk a little bit about some different memory strategies. The last couple of weeks we've talked about um, auditory memory and visual memory. And today I just want to give you some kind of general memory strategies that you can employ throughout your day and your lifestyle. So number one is keep consistent routines. Again, in this time of uncertainty um, where our, our schedules aren't as normal as they can be, there are certain things that you can keep consistent, like the time of, that you go to bed, the time that you wake, um, and then what you do upon waking. You know, do you get up and shower and, and brush teeth and eat? And you know, each of those things that you have normally done in your day, try to keep those routines consistent. There is some talk out there about, you know, well, I want to try to mix things up and challenge my brain. And that is true. We can switch our routines um, when we want to challenge our brain. But today I really want us to focus more on strategies to help us keep our memory really strong and consistent. Um, so again, maintain your typical sleep schedule, eating schedule, um, how you go about your day and what you, how you spend your day. Even though you may not be able to go to exercise class, work in those routines of watching the exercise class on channel 1960 um, or where you take a walk every day at the same time, whether it's through the halls, whether it's in your own space, whether it's out around the, the neighborhood um, or the lake area, so or the pond area, excuse me. And keep those routines consistent. Create a memory space by your entry door. This is something that is very, very important. And in this time where our schedules aren't quite as busy, this is a really great time to get into this habit. So a memory space can be any size, shape, um, doesn't matter. Um, just find something. Maybe it's a bench, maybe it's a table, maybe it's even just a chair, depending on the amount of space that you have available. Um, but create this as your true memory space, where you have um, your keys, your wallet, your phone, your glasses, your hearing aids, um, whatever those things are that you need in your day, every day, um, and that you may take with you. So if it's by your entry door, it's going to increase the likelihood of you seeing that you need it before you leave. Also upon arriving home, then that all goes back to the exact same space when you come in. So we don't waste as much time in our day saying, where did I put this? Where's, where are my keys? I can't find my wallet. Where's my purse? Um, so having that designated memory space can alleviate stress, but also help us to, again, work on some of that consistent routines. Sometimes I even recommend that you take a sticky note and you write what it is that goes in each space on that memory space. Um, so for example, you have a sticky note that says keys, one that says phone, one that says sunglasses. Um, and then that way, at least in the beginning, as you're getting used to creating this memory space, you have some more cues to help you remember exactly what it is you need to put there. And if something's missing, then it helps you know what it is that you didn't put back when you, have, when you returned. Here's a really important one. Use one calendar for all appointments. A lot of times we'll have a big calendar on a wall and then we'll have a, a calendar that we keep in our purse or in our, our breast pocket. Um, but really, ideally, what we want is just one calendar um, where we write all of our appointments because the tendency is that if I have it in, maybe you know I have it in my purse or in my breast pocket, and then I go to the doctor's office and I write down my next appointment. That's great and wonderful, but if I don't go back and look at that calendar 
and then I'm at home and I'm on the phone and I make a hair appointment and I write it on my calendar on the wall, but I do it for the exact same time that I made my doctor's appointment in the one that in the calendar that's in my purse. That's where we get into problems. Um, so it just takes the the next step of really focusing on keeping everything in one space. So one calendar, all appointments. So what do you do if you go to the doctor's office and you need to make that appointment, but you're using the wall calendar for everything else? Um, go ahead and make that appointment. Get the note card, the little um, business card, appointment card. Take that, and then as soon as you get home, write it on there. If it doesn't work, call the doctor's office back um, because then you'll have your master calendar there when you make that phone call. Write in a daily blog or journal. Again, I've underlined the word A in this one here. I want you to really think about keeping just one log or one journal. Um, because again, the, the concept here is that the, the less that we have, then the less we have to manage. Um, so if we keep everything in one place for our daily log or our daily journal, um, it's a lot easier to find and then review even later. So speaking of reviewing, when you're writing, I want you to note people. Um, who was it that you were involved with in that day? Who did you talk to on the phone? What tasks did you do? Um, what kind of senses were evoked during the day? So when we think about how memory keeps, how we're able to store those memories, when we uh, equate them to feelings or emotions or smell or touch, any of those senses, and we take note of those, then it is easier for our brain to remember those things as well. Okay, so this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier um, in our walk down memory lane when we were talking about how are we going to write about our earlier baseball memories. So again, a lot of people might say, well, I'm not doing anything right now. You know, I do the same thing every day and the same thing every day. But this again is a great way for you to think about stimulating yourself here. So call that friend, call that neighbor, check on them, and then write it in your daily log or your daily journal. This is also great then for later when you want to call and check on them again, um, you can say, oh, what did I talk about with Mary last week? I'm gonna go and look back in my, in my daily log and, and help me remember what we talked about so that we can pick up where we left off of. Um, so again, a great strategy to help you with that short-term memory. Um, and then you can quiz yourself. The last thing I want to talk about is keeping a list of things to do and keep it in your memory space. So we often think about those wonderful sticky notes. Sticky notes are great and they do have their own purpose. Um, but when we think about lists, um, whether it's a grocery list or it's a list of things that we need to do this week, the key is to keep it all in one space. Um, we don't want to take a, a sticky note and write it down and then put it over on the kitchen counter. Um, and then we write another sticky note and we put it in the bathroom. And then we write another sticky note and we put it in the bedroom. And then we need and all, let's say all of those things had our grocery list. Those were things that we needed to buy at the grocery store. But then we go back and it's time to actually go to the grocery store or to make that order through the phone or the computer and the sticky note that was in the kitchen got thrown away or it, the one in the bathroom got stuck to the mirror um, and put away in the drawer. So really ideally what we want is one place where we keep all of our lists, things to do, grocery items, um, bills that need paid, whatever those lists are that you like to keep to help you feel organized, keep it all in one space. And then keep that list in that memory space that we talked about earlier. So hopefully that gave you a few ideas um, of, and let's just review it really quick here one more time. So again, just in reviewing that, Keep your consistent routines. Create a memory space where you put all of the important things that you need to keep track of, keys, wallet, 
purse. Use one calendar for all of your appointments. Write a daily log or a journal. And then when you're writing that, note people, feelings, tasks, goals, and then keep a one list of things to do, um, groceries, jobs for the day, whatever those things are. So in summary with those memory strategies, think about simple, keeping things simple, keeping things in one space. Okay, so then on to cognitive stimulation. So the things we talked about just a second ago with memory strategies, those are things that we want to do to help us preserve the memories that we have. Now what we're talking about are things to challenge our brain, to keep our brain firing new synapses, to keep it making new neural pathways. These are the things we're talking about when we think about cognitive stimulation. So here, I do want you to try something new or different, okay? So maybe that's the way in which you comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face. Try doing it with your non-dominant hand, okay? So instead of making it a non-thinking task where you just comb your hair, you're just brushing your teeth, you're not even really thinking about it because it's such a routine, make your brain and your muscles and your body think about what you're doing. So take those items in your non-dominant hand and comb your hair, brush your teeth. Um, you may, for the first couple days of the week, need to brush your teeth again with your dominant hand to ensure that you got them clean. Um, but what we're doing is thinking about what we do on a daily basis in a new way or a different way. Try cooking or painting, um, playing an instrument or singing. Doing something that maybe you haven't done in a while, maybe it's something that you used to love to do, or maybe it's something completely new and different to you. Um, but stimulate your brain in a different way. Um, thinking about the arts, thinking about following directions differently. Those are the types of things that can help to um, challenge your brain in new ways. Another thing that you can try um, are different types of puzzles. Um, you noticed in the Messenger, you've had a lot of different opportunities um, for, for some attention and focus, um, cognitive thinking types of activities. So one of the most common questions that we get is, should I do a crossword puzzle every day? And the answer is, I don't know. Do you like crossword puzzles? Um, is it something that you enjoy? Because if it's not something you enjoy and it just makes you feel not so smart, you're not going to do it. If you're not going to do it, it's not going to be cognitively enhancing. So find things that you enjoy, but that those things that are challenging to you. So if you enjoy the number Sudokus, then maybe try the letter and word Sudokus. Um, if you enjoy doing word searches where you're circling, then try those, but do it in a different way. Um, maybe do it where you only find every other word on the list, um, and then you have a, a pattern where you find the first word, cross it out, then skip the word, then go to the next word, find that word, circle it, cross it out on your list, skip the next word. So creating a way in which you do something typically, but adding a twist to it to where it's a little bit um, different or new for you. So another question that I get a lot is, um, you know, well, I like to read. So if I'm reading, I'm, I'm being cognitively challenged. Um, but my, my point to you is this, that when we watch TV or listen to the radio or even read, our brain can do it without really being engaged. How many times have you been reading and then you get to the end of the chapter and you're like, hmm, not really sure I remember what happened here. Or you're watching a TV show and you have no idea what happened to the first 10 minutes of the show. Um, what happens with this is that it can become just noise, um, visual noise, auditory noise, 
Um, and so what we want to do is when we engage in those activities, that once we've finished with that, we want to write about it. So you're probably noticing a trend here today. I'm talking a lot about writing, and that's because our brain remembers better when we write. Um, so read your chapter of your book, but then sit down and write about what you read. Um, watch that movie that you always love to watch, um, but then write about what it was that happened in it. Maybe you write about the character development of one of the, per the people in the, in the movie or in the TV show. Um, but again, taking something that you're attending to, that you're, that you're thinking about and processing, um, whether it's visually or auditorily, and then writing about it. So that's taking that to a new level of attention and focus. So ultimately, when we think about cognitive enhancement or stimulation, I want you to think about how much the brain loves to be challenged. Um, so think about these tasks, trying something new, something different, writing, and doing things that you like, but trying them in a different way. Um, show your brain some love this week. Try something new and something different. So your homework for this week is to find time each day to attend to a task. So again, reading, doing Sudoku, doing crossword puzzles, um, even like we talked about, brushing your hair, brushing your teeth, attend to those tasks, but add a little twist of doing it differently. As always, I want you to think about moving multiple times a day. Walking, doing your marching in place, um, gardening, getting out there and doing some movement. Um, and then stay connected. It is so, so important to maintain those social connections, whether it's through a video chat, whether it's through a phone call, and even if it's in writing. Um, do that, make those connections with people in your connections, talk about those memories that you have. Um, talk about the enjoyment that you had with baseball or softball um, in, your, in your days of, of either raising kids or being a youngster yourself. Um, but reach out, call or write a letter to a friend. Okay, so lots of things to think about this week. Um, and as usual, I like to give you something to think about for laughing. Um, Laughter is good for the heart. It's good for the soul. Um, so we're going to watch a little bit of baseball funnies. Um, so let me get this going for you. And get through the commercial. Oh. Oh. Ouch. Seriously? That one cracks me up. All right, like run, she run, did it on purpose. Run, 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 what a great outfielder. And the tackle. Woo! Oh. <laughs> yep, you're doing real good. Blake, go to home! What are you doing? Blake, get up! Go home! She's had enough. <laughs> On the river swing. Go, 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 go! Go to run! Run to first! Run! Run! Give her a run! We all need an extra hand now and then. Good swing, man. 
close this out so I hope you had a few laughs with that um, I think it's always fun to think about laughing and to just smile so in closing keep your distance from others stay connected with others and be well I hope you have a great week and thanks for joining me bye <laughs>